Our first book uh, was Paul Beatty's The Sellouts, which we have here on the side. Uh, it's, a, it's a challenging one that I set you uh, this time round, I think. Positives, I'm thinking. Everyone's face is very passive right now. I can't read it. <laughs> Any thoughts? Funny. Very mm. funny. Bitingly funny and angry at times. And that funniness just goes on and on. Yeah. To and the point where I'd almost had enough fun, I think. <laughs> OK, by the time you reach the end of it. Because, I mean, it's an African-American narrator who's resigned himself to the fate that comes with being born in the agrarian ghetto, they describe it, of Dickens. It's so satirical. He does some very controversial things and makes some very controversial points. We're obviously a world away from all of that, chatting about this yeah. in Norfolk, of all places. But did you feel like um, he really gave you a sense of what it is to live in the ghettos of, of LA? Uh, yes, he did. And also, but it's, um, and he's, he seems to be angry at everything. So <laughs> he just realises that uh, the whole thing's a mess. Uh, whites and blacks have just as much to fault almost. So bringing back slavery, uh, which is the quest of he, one of his quests, I thought was a brilliant uh, twist that made you, uh, it was a comic twist in itself. And then the rest, it, as it is just one long rant or sta like stand up comedy, you can, and they can put it down any time really. Well, yes, you're right. It's, it, it, it's more like stand up than a novel at times. Yeah. It just, I can't really remember a plus. And I only finished it the other day, but I can remember. Well, it's forming a new state, isn't it? Well, a black state. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, he's I, bringing I can back. Remember the tone of voice and, idea. and the funniness <laughs> of it, but as a novel, I'm not sure it was a novel. Well, right? and also he's facing the, the beginning of the novel is facing the soon Supreme Court for for, for for crimes, and then as the book goes on, yeah. it kind of unravels what these crimes are. We obviously so don't want to give away too much. So there is this kind of plot. You know, you wonder what's going to happen. Uh, kind of. Well, Did sorry. you feel comfortable laughing at it? Because it's so controversial and there are so many taboo topics in there. Segregation, race. It's supposed to be satirical, but it feels like um, a lot of controversial things happen. I think it's supposed to make us think. I think we're supposed to... Well, I felt ashamed in parts and I felt confused in parts and I had to look things up and I wanted to know what certain things were. And I think that that humour, it's not aimed... It's not for me and it's almost... I felt like when I was reading it, it was to... I was colluding with something that actually I had no place to be colluding mm. with. So you, you want footnotes, don't you? Because it's so foreign in some ways. But I think maybe that's one of the things I liked about it because I'm so s smugly sitting there reading my favourite books all the time, you know, and they're written for me as a as a white. British woman who's well educated and I can smugly sit in my space and I can read mm. um, the story and that was that was a totally different thing and uh, and it puts you out of your comfort zone it does and it yeah. was so funny but I don't think that took away it didn't take anything away but from it I think it also brings out the point that uh, this is happening all over the place the, the fact that people won't say things yeah and um, so when you say things which you feel uncomfortable about, uh, we should be saying a lot more about other things as well. Yeah, and I'm, we're not. when you say that it needs citations, I mean, it does hark back a lot to the civil rights movement. You've got court cases from the 1890s and things like that, which maybe if you don't know about, which I knew about some of them, but not all of them, that's when it could be really helpful to have a historical context. Absolutely, but I think there were a lot of other things going on that I just didn't, I didn't even know that what to look up because he's talking about things that are completely alien to, mm. as you were saying, mm. to our culture, yeah. our background. It encouraged me to look stuff up. I mean, I do yeah. try as much as I can on like on Twitter and things to follow and read more than I say about stuff because I want to know everything. And that book was, it was good to read something where I couldn't rest on my laurels. Yeah. That's how I felt. And I mean, from a political context, especially what's happening in America and the Black Lives Matter movement that's kind of taken over in the last couple of years, it's really interesting to me that this has won the Man Booker Prize right now in 2016 it seems both historical and relevant at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's always relevant, I think. I mean, it goes back into the American history. Uh, the novels about, you know, you've got um, James Baldwin, there's yeah, hundreds of novels yeah. who are doing the same thing. But he, I don't know if they've done it as comically as that. No, that's I think a, that's the best thing nice, about this. Nice but we cut. should say the Man Booker Prize is predominantly, I mean, has been up until now, British, right? And with British authors winning, Chris. Well, British and former Commonwealth. It was, I think, two years ago that's that right, it was yeah. opened out to anybody writing in English. And, of course, that's the controversial thing. The Americans can, and for the first time, have won that prize. And we should just say that's to do with the publisher. 
They have gone for a winner from a British publisher, I believe. That's, that's the link that they've made. Am I right in saying that? Or do you think it's, I, it's, just, it's just that they've gone I, American? I think the book has to have been published in English. Right. Does that, do you think it's worthy of the prize, I yes. suppose? I do, definitely. Well, I, I don't know how many of the other ones. <laughs> but, uh, a diplomatic answer. I like but, it. But I did see, it's the, I, wasn't, I wouldn't have read it. Uh, but uh, you asked me to read it, and, I, and I'm glad I did. <laughs> thank you, thank you for reading it when we asked you to read it. Do you often see, um, after a book wins a prize, that it, it, it shoots up in popularity, Chris? Absolutely, and, and shortlists don't often make a difference, but a prize winner like that, or the Costa, or one of those similar prizes, yeah, there's a spike in sales. Everybody wants to read what's won.